celebrating all things cool in Jacksonville. A local show with a spotlight on the 904. With hosts Eden Candle and Mark Payton. Featuring amazing stories from every neighborhood with Rance Adams. This is River City Live. Hi, welcome to River City Live. We're so glad you're here today. Instead of napping, which we know the weather is just exactly perfect for. Oh, Netflix and nap. Just and, perfect. Uh, just but perfect. we're here. I'm glad I'm here with you guys. Unless uh, you're... Oh, go ahead. Uh, how about that storm, though? It was crazy. Oh. And I was thinking of you. What was your commute like? Because that was really when it hit hard. Okay, so I leave the house at uh, 4 in the morning-ish to go to Gator Country for the radio part of the day. And it was pretty empty, so it really wasn't a problem at all. The problem was sleeping because the Rot Labra Hound was quivering. She was <laughs> so scared. And, you know, she's like... She's our own little Richard Nunn, and we don't even, you know, it's nice to have the weather alerts coming in on the phone and the this and the that, but she lets us know when it's about to go down, and yeah, it that, was. Yeah, that thing came through. My alarm went off at like 4.50 because I was going to the gym, and I heard it, and I'm like, uh, the power's probably going to go out at the gym, so I probably should just stay home. Good excuse. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you're at work. You're working out. I was sleeping. Good. I just kept snoozing. Well, I, I needed some beauty sleep. Oh, I went back to sleep. Oh, good. Okay, I'm making you feel better. Thank you, Rance. Let's you were doing scientific research for the first topic of our show today. And I was. <laughs> okay. So there are a couple things that could help you to take on that day if you're tired. One of them is napping and the other is coffee. But what if I was to tell you that if you combine both together, boom, you have the coffee nap, which is amazing and it actually works. So the University of Sydney, Australia, they did some research on this of what happens if you pair the two up. And it turns out that you are more alert and you stay awake longer because they did it with just doing caffeine and just the nap. And then they combined it both together and they made people do a driving study. And people were less likely to drift in another lane, which is very important mm -hmm. when you're driving, if you combine them both together. The whole thing with this though is you want to time up yeah. it perfectly because it takes about 30 to 45 minutes for caffeine to kick in to your body. So you need to go to sleep in that window? Okay. Yeah, so maybe take a sleeping pill. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it can knock you out to wake yourself back up again. No, like, so the idea would be if you take coffee and you go to bed right away, you could timing up just right where all of a sudden you're ready to go. That's now, now, interesting. It's really smart. Yeah, yeah. Have you guys ever done anything like that? I've done it accidentally before, and I will say when I did wake up like 35, 45 minutes later, I felt great, and I was able to work out, and I felt fine, and I still was able to fall asleep, you know, at the nighttime. It didn't mess up my day too much. Have you guys ever tried anything no. like that? I actually have, not intentionally, just like I'm sure you didn't do it intentionally because you'd heard about it somewhere. But yeah, I've had a cup of coffee, and then I find myself with a little bit of time to lay down, and I have no problem falling asleep. <laughs> and, and now that I think about it, yeah, I think I wake up a little bit extra Extra. Yeah. A little extra. L a little extra. extra. You know, and with all studies, they always warn people, don't overdo it on the caffeine. Right. You know, there are sad, you know, side effects like with four that. Four cups of coffee and a 12-hour nap. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, what was that okay. jingle back in the day? It was for food, but it was like, two great things that taste great together, but now this for is... Reese's peanut butter. Ah, oh. See, I don't like those. That makes me pull out my age <laughs> on you. <laughs> but two great things that work together. I'm not a... I mean, I could nap anywhere, but that just seems to defeat because I'll just have my coffee in the morning and that's just not even really a pick-me-up but it's just kind of a maintenance thing yeah. for me but I might try that well, on this future. rainy day yeah. something that just something to give you try a no. pot of coffee right now okay so science has been very busy because while they were determining that you should nap and then drink coffee and vice versa they were also coming up with the perfect body now I have opted to take this story because <laughs> this is about women the perfect body for a woman I thought maybe I should be the one to deliver this news I don't know why oh, I felt okay. like that would be more appropriate so we're listening um, okay the perfect female body does it exist scientifically yes but here's what it says this University of Texas study says the perfect female body measures 5'5 five, five, and is 39, 25, 36. And instead of trying to visualize that, we're going to give you a picture of that perfect female body. There it is. Yep. So. Isn't that the uh, Ashley, is it Graham? The, yeah, the, the quote plus, unquote plus, plus size. size model. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm not sure. But basically, so what they're saying, though, it, it's a little bit. Boxing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A, a little more curvier than like you would see like models mm -hmm. on a cover, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So, so, I mean, that's just according to science here. Uh, what makes attractiveness important is another thing they studied. I bet they had no problem getting college <laughs> students to sign up for that study. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, as a guy, I like that body well, style. Yeah, I'm, not, right I'm, not, yeah. I'm not complaining. <laughs> right. so I feel, but I feel very scientific. So what about you and the breakdown 
of men? Like, do you men? have a body style that you like, that you prefer? Um, I do not like a man skinnier than me. I don't want to be able to, like, exi let me give you an example. I, I love Kenny Chesney's music, but I was at an auction once, and his pants were up for auction, and I put them on, and they were too tight. So oh. that's not for me. That's not for me. I, I just, no, I don't really have, like, one set type. I mean, broad shoulders are very nice. What, but, is there, uh, like, too muscular? Is that a turn off? Because I, I heard women say that, too. I've not met that man. <laughs> <laughs> too muscular? No. I haven't just met Just shut that. us down. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So they also say part of it is because of fertility. So oh, men, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah so I'm evolutionarily right. speaking, is that a word? That, uh, you know, men look at women for, you yeah. know, future breeding? Yeah, like that woman right there. That's a scientific word. Well like, played, Rand. Like, it's not really accurate, but I can see where they might think, okay, well, that that woman can nurse a baby all right. Not that that really plays into it, but I'm just saying. Like, I, I can yeah. see the caveman, you know, back well, to nature. Thing. I also think the full figured is also, it's a healthier look than, like, the 90s. Was it a waif model? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Like a really yeah. skinny, you know, side. So, yeah. but I, 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 like I think it's more realistic. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's definitely yeah. more realistic. All right. Here's a body type uh, we could all get behind. Our new mascot for the jumbo shrimp. Isn't he adorable? We're going to take a look at him right now. There he is. Some scrimp. I, I it's opening week next week for the jumbo shrimp, but uh, we don't have a name for this fellow. Now, we still have Southpaw, our original mascot, so don't, don't worry about Southpaw. This will be our second mascot for the jumbo shrimp, and they're doing a contest. Rance has some more on that. Yep. They want to double your pleasure, double your fun. They're having a naming cost contest for the mascot. It's going on from now until Tuesday. Opening night is next Wednesday, so you've got to write up against opening night to get, have a chance to name the mascot. Yeah. Uh, they'll announce it on opening night, and the winner will get season tickets. And uh, that's uh, pretty amazing. I am just... They didn't ask our opinion on them naming the team, so but I guess it's cool that we get to help name the mascot. Do you, you guys have any guesses or any uh, ideas for? Uh, I didn't come up with any of my own, but I, I heard a few that I thought were really good. So I have one that I came up with, uh -huh. but then I kind of did research because I wasn't sure if it was a fit. So the old one was South Paw. Yeah, or if we he's call this there. one South Claw. But then uh, I had to say, do jumbo shrimp have claws? And they do have some type of structure that's close to a claw, but then <laughs> that doesn't, it looks like a mythical creature, so I think I might be okay with that one. So I think that's gonna be the one that, that I throw out. I've there. never had a shrimp looking that hairy, so that kind of makes me nervous. So yeah, I, you're a shrimp here. Yeah. Um, I heard one the other day, my friend Amadeus came up with Jimbo. Oh, Jimbo the Jumbo. Jimbo the Jumbo shrimp. I thought that was nice. adorable. And he's already like, submitted it, so I'm not worried about uh, that. One of the things I like, though, is they're bringing it back, you know, to the fans to come up with the name. Mm -hmm. Because some people were taken back when they did all the rebranding and they didn't ask the fans yeah. for it. You know, so this is kind of a great way to get everybody involved and, you know, now be if, a part of it. Now, if you want to submit your uh, name submission, uh, you can do it at any of the Tom Bush family of dealerships. There's 10 locations. You can go to TomBush.com or you can send an email to win at JackShrimp.com. So there's an opportunity. You could be famous for naming that mascot. How about that? There you go. <laughs> Pretty good stuff. So, all right. Well, um... You know, we like to uh, get out and about and meet some folks, right? Mm -hmm. So have you, uh, I, I had a message in my ear just now telling me what, where we were going next. I missed it, so help me out here. Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay, so well, let's talk about tourism in Jacksonville okay. before we get to that. That's you know, Jacksonville, you know, it's interesting because it really is on the map when it comes to tourism. More people are coming here, and I don't know, well, with me, for example, I've only been here for about a year and a half, and when people come to visit, they're just blown away about how much things there are to do here, mm -hmm. you know? So we have a list of why that is, you know, j just recently with their whole, like, tourism campaign and right. how they restructured everything. But really what it comes down to is that sporting events are here. Uh -huh. You have uh, the ocean right here. And then also the history side, you know, you have St. Augustine and just a lot of charm here because it is the first coast after all. Yeah, and, and, and in Florida, there aren't a lot of places where they're seeing growth like that. Exactly. For the most part, it's been kind of on a, a downward spiral, if you will. Uh, but here in Jacksonville, it's starting to just really pop, which is nice. And I was saying, too, whenever visitors come in, they know about Jacksonville, but, you know, I'm from up north, but when they come here, they're like, wow, this is a lot nicer than mm -hmm. I thought, you know. Hey. So. I mean, in the 18 months since I've been here, and I mean, you and I both, I mean, obviously I get to explore for this job, so it makes it, you know, a whole different scenario for me. And hopefully we get to translate and share that information with you. But, I mean, myself, I'm continually blown away because 
every weekend there's two or three events in different pocket, pockets of the city. I mean, and this is the most runningest town I have ever lived in. <laughs> I mean, Eden is definitely proof of that. I just sit back. When with my running is, you mean people like to get out and run? It's oh yeah, an active town. Oh That's yeah. Like people getting out you know, it's funny stuff. as outsiders that came in here and now we're a part of it. Jogging, you know, running marathons. There's more marathons than I've ever seen in my life here. You Your know? first week, the roads were all closed by where you lived. Okay, this is a true story. So, yeah, the first week, you know, the family was here. We were in our little neighborhood. And uh, we were closed, and I couldn't even get to my house because it was blocked off from a run. And then a week later, the local paper came out, my little subdivision, and Eden placed in there. <laughs> it's your fault. So how funny is that? So I couldn't get to my house. You know, and I remember that, and I was asking, there's a police officer there, and I'm like, can I get, it's the only street into my subdivision. And he's like, no, sorry. He's like, they'll be over an hour and a half. And I'm like, hour and a half? We just met, and he's, he's, he's like, this is irritating. I couldn't get to my house, and then the newsletter comes, and it's a picture of me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ding! But that's so how, sorry. I mean, with the arts, and like you said, the yeah. history, sports, I mean, so many minor league, and we've got the NFL, so Jacksonville, yeah. on the come. You know, and speaking.